Hi there, I'm Chief Meteorologist Wes Owenstein with a special update for Tropical Storm Dorian for Tuesday night into Wednesday morning. There were a lot of changes in the 11 o'clock update Tuesday night from the National Hurricane Center, and I want to jump into a lot of those. It all starts with the fact that we also had a new tropical system form, Tropical Depression number six, which was halfway in between the Carolina coast and Bermuda, was upgraded to Tropical Storm Aaron. That will finally start to move northeast, staying offshore throughout the day Wednesday, remaining a tropical storm with little to no impact in North Carolina. Our bigger impact will be from the other side as a cold front approaches, bringing us some good old fashioned non severe rain Wednesday afternoon and early Wednesday evening. That's what's happening Wednesday in North Carolina. But late tonight into early Wednesday morning, the Hurricane Hunter aircraft still out investigating Tropical Storm Dorian, which tonight winds have held at 50 miles per hour. So no changes with the wind speed, but an important change in the direction. It is now moving northwest instead of west northwest. The data they continue to collect out there will be fed into the computer models. I'll show you those in a second, but let's get back to the direction. As we look at the satellite in the eastern Caribbean close up, you can see there's been more of a northerly movement that combined with the fact that the center reformed to the north earlier in the day Tuesday means big implications for the forecast track and where the storm is headed and who it's going to impact. Let's first start with the computer models. These are the Tuesday night runs. And one thing that the computer models finally latched onto is that northerly movement and that northern reformation of the center earlier in the day Tuesday. So they're all in pretty good agreement that the system is going to come right over Puerto Rico as a tropical storm on Wednesday. Notice the tight clustering that tells us that there's confidence in that particular forecast. The computer models are also in pretty good agreement at some point high pressure over the Atlantic Ocean is going to start to push that system a little more to the west, a little more toward the Bahamas, a little more toward Florida. But since we had that northerly movement earlier and since we had that reformation of the center a little farther to the north, that means that push to the west is going to happen a little later and there's going to be some changes by the time the system gets to Florida. Now where we get to some uncertainty around Florida, because now you can see instead of a tight clustering of the lines, the computer models are starting to fan out, showing there's some disagreement. There's some uncertainty about exactly what's going to happen. And that's why everyone in the southeast from North Carolina down to the Florida Keys needs to watch this system, because if you think about it, from Miami to up around parts of South Carolina, we're talking six to 700 miles. That's a pretty big spread of where the center of this storm could be. So those are the updated computer models. The National Hurricane Center forecast has also been updated. Again, still a tropical storm expected to remain that as it moves over the island of Puerto Rico sometime on Wednesday. Then strengthening very quickly once it reemerges into the Atlantic north of the Caribbean before it makes that turn to the west. It's also now expected to be a hurricane again for a while there. The forecast intensity did not bring it to hurricane status, but now that's expected to happen as it curves back to the west, heading for the holiday weekend somewhere along the coast of Florida. But that turn and that jog to the north means there's an area farther to the north that could be impacted by this. The best way to show that is comparing the center lines from the last two advisories from the National Hurricane Center. That red line is the 11 o'clock center line from the National Hurricane Center. Let me drop in another line. This white line is the 5 o'clock center line. So from white to red, you can see there was a noticeable movement to the north. And that means more people could be impacted farther to the north. So a close in look at the forecast track means anyone from Savannah, Georgia, all the way down to Miami, Florida is in the cone of uncertainty and could have a category one hurricane on their doorstep on Sunday with 75 mile per hour winds. But remember, the cone of uncertainty tells us where the center could be. So that means as we superimpose what the hurricane could look like when it gets to Florida on Sunday, it could be right here over the Space Coast, Cape Canaveral, east of Orlando. It could be down here on the other side of the peninsula in the Gulf of Mexico, but it could also be on the northern edge of the cone, which would mean 
parts of the Carolinas would have different and much bigger impacts. Still not expecting a direct hit in North Carolina, but we have to keep the options open that there's still a lot of time for things to change, and it's something we need to watch closely. Again, maybe not watching the eye of the tropical storm itself, but we'll also be watching high pressure over the Atlantic because that's going to be in charge of steering. A weaker high pressure means this system could pull farther to the north. That's not currently the forecast. The forecast is for this high pressure to strengthen and allow me to step over here. If that gets stronger, that's going to be able to push the system farther to the west maybe a little sooner. That's why the consistent forecast has been to bring this system into Florida. But if this forecast for what this area of high pressure changes, that'll change the forecast for Tropical Storm Dorian. Of course, something we need to watch. It is only early Wednesday morning, and this is still five days away from approaching somewhere along the southeast coast. Keep it right here for the latest. I'm Wes Hohenstein, CBS 17.